Let's talk about the air-to-ground radar usage in the F-15E Strike Eagle and DCS. This is the 311 Griffin YouTube channel, and welcome. First up, uh, this video is just the basics of how the radar works and some of the quirks that you might see. Uh, I'm not an expert. I have no first-hand knowledge of the radar usage and everything that I know about it. I've learned from DCS, in DCS, or from DCS-related channels. My purpose here isn't to take you into the deep abyss of the best ways to use the radar or the coolest tricks or even the different modes. We're just going to talk about the basics of how it works and then I'll walk through the very basics of how I'm using it currently. And uh, the goal here is just to help new people who uh, might be uh, attempting to dive deep into how it works and to understand it fully. Um, this is hopefully to help you understand the basics uh, and get you in the air and help you get uh, ordnance on the target soon and then you can dive in a little bit deeper uh, this is more of a an introduction and a quick start kind of a video okay keep in mind I have a lot more to learn as well okay so the way the radar works basically is by painting the ground with radiation in specific places and then processing the returns there's a lot of math in it that uh, I don't understand. I probably wouldn't even understand it if I knew what the formulas were in the computations. But uh, here, this is a real beam mapping scan in the F-15E. First thing to notice is that we have these shadows in our return. And this is a relatively flat area that we're looking at here. It's got some raised areas. And behind those raised areas are basically shadows. Our uh, radiation energy can't hit those places and can't give us a return. So we see shadows. That's the first thing. One other thing you may notice is that in some scans you will see there will be nothing in the center. It's a bit ab above my head, but I think it has to do with velocity and, and with what the radar can map and relative velocities and things like that. But you may see gaps in the coverage and... Uh, the main thing to note here is that whenever you're trying to map, you won't be able to map directly in front of the plane, regardless of if you see anything there or not. Enjoy this particular graphic. I used Inkscape, so it's uh, pseudo-semi-professional. <laughs> uh, as our Strike Eagle flies over this landscape, the antenna scans a space that uh, we tend to think of it as a square. It's, it's kind of a partial arc, I guess. Um, and if we think of the shadowy areas on this ground, a uh, graphic that I've made as being hidden from our radar line of sight, uh, we could also assume that those would be dark in our radar scope when we see them in the cockpit. Uh, so here's another 2D graphic. Uh, I made this one in paint just so that you could better appreciate the previous graphic, and hopefully this shows the radar shadow in an easy-to-understand way. Okay, so keep in mind if you gain altitude over the terrain, you can look down and get a better angle in many cases because the radar can now see behind some of those high spots. So it's kind of an angles game, uh, but also note that your potential scan area can change based on your altitude and how far out you're looking. Okay, let's go back to the Inkscape, slightly better graphic, and just note that the pilot and the WISO can move the radar around a bit and scan different areas. So now let's talk about mapping. If we can pick some areas that we recognize out of our initial scan when we're doing the, the real beam mapping scan, if we can find some landscape that we kind of recognize, we can tell the system to look in more detail at those areas and try to find a target. So that's what I'm saying. When I'm saying that I'm going to map an area, it's it, that's what I'm talking about. So this isn't a great way to go out and find random targets of opportunity in a cast mission, but it's an excellent method to build off of target area evaluation for pre-planned strikes to positively identify and target specific things. So think of this a little like Google Maps or something like that, Google Earth, Google Maps, um, maps on your phone. If you're looking for a specific place that you know roughly the location of, you start in a bigger area. And I'm not talking about punching in an address, I'm just talking about looking for something that you know kind of where it is, but maybe not exactly. Okay, so you start off in a bigger area, then you zoom in to a level or, or two deeper, and you kind of fine-tune your search until you're close enough and in the correct area to find the exact thing you're looking for. So this is basically what we're doing with the F-15E radar. 
So let's jump into DCS and take a look at all the things that I've talked about so far. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about control mappings or even all the possible controls you'll wind up using as you find and prosecute targets. This is a very specific example of how I use the radar to get to a target area, get my pod near enough to the target so I can find it, get the pod on it, set a target point, and prosecute the target. We're not getting in any fancier than that, but there are uh, some controls that I use for this specific process, and I'm going to tell you about those. Um, also note, I'm using a Thrustmaster Warthog, and this is just how I have mine set up at this point in time. There may be other ways to do some of the functions we'll talk about. This is just what I'm doing, okay? So these are the controls that I use. These are basically what they're called. Um, the control on my Warthog that I'm using for that control, if it's different than what the name is in the F-15 Eagle, uh, and what they do. So feel free to pause it here and look at these if you need more information on those. Uh, and this isn't all of the controls that you'll use. This is just what I use for this process. Okay, one other note, if you take off from the ground and you're flying solo, you may have to jump in the back seat and turn the pod on. Uh, if there's a way to do this from the front seat, I've not discovered it yet, so let me know, but you'll need to jump in the back seat and turn the pod on, or you'll get nothing on your targeting pod and you won't be able to do anything with it. Okay, so once you're set up and you're approaching the target, it's time to start scanning. Um, I have had some issues getting the RBM to show much detail, uh, but realistically, if we know roughly where the target is, we should be able to have a steer point or a target point to use for our initial high resolution map. Uh, I want to reiterate that you can't fly directly at the target and you don't want to be too close to the target. Um, and finally, it's easier to work the radar if you get the target area kind of near the edge of the scope and fly more or less straight and level. That's my experience anyway. So take command of the AG radar. So once you have the AG radar up, castle switch long to the side that uh, of the MPD that the radar is on. Make sure that the cursor function, which is shown above push button 7, is set to map. If not, press PB7 till it shows map. Use auto acquisition 4 or aft to set the map size, which is shown above PB8. Uh, the size you want depends on how confident you are in the location of the target and what identifiable features are around it. Uh, that you can see now. Use the TDC to slew the map box around, get it where you want. When it's in the location you want, use the TDC press to start the map process. Note the countdown in the lower right corner of the scope. When it completes, the high resolution map will show up. Uh, now the radar will continue to map, which can be beneficial, but if you want to stop it, freeze it with the left multifunction switch. At this point, if you can find the target you want or features near it, you can cue the pod. But we'll do that in a minute. Most of the time you won't have enough detail yet, so you'll need to use the auto act switch to get a smaller mapping window. You'll slew the cursor to the proper location and use TDC press to start mapping again. You're basically doing the same process, but you're refining that map. Continue this process until you find a place to cue the pod and then change the cursor function to Q. Slew your cursor to the target location and TDC press and then uh, your pod will snap to the location. So if you're looking at both, if you got the radar up and the pod up, you'll notice that the, the pod will snap to the location. Okay, so we're going to jump over to the pod, castle switch long to the side of the MPD with your pod on it, and now you can slew the pod around to either find the proper target or get a finer bead on the one you're looking at. Um, you might already have the target in sight, but you're going to fine-tune it. Uh, for ranging, use the laser with the left multifunction switch. Once you have the target in your sights, change the cursor function uh, again with PB7 to TGT for target and TDC press to designate. So a note on designations, it seems to take a second to get the designation and it's best to just fly as straight and level as you can while it's doing it. Uh, you'll see that the cursor kind of jump around a little bit sometimes, but uh, for our purposes that's okay as long as it's close. Once you have that target set, uh, fly as necessary to get the proper run in. Don't forget to set your AG weapon profile, which should have been done already at this point. Turn your master arm on. Don't forget to do that. Um, you should be in AG mode, but just in case, don't forget to double check. Make sure you're in AG mode. Yeah, you really won't get a good reticle if you're not, um, so it should be obvious. Uh, fly the steering line. 
watch the T-rail or time to release and when it gets close hold the pickle button down till the weapon or weapons come off the rail. If auto laser is on, the laser will come on. Note the L in the lower corner of the pod screen. Uh, if it's not flashing, hit the left multifunction switch to turn it on. Um, if it is flashing, you're good to go. Fly to keep the pod unmasked till the weapon or weapons impact and you'll see time till impact on the HUD. After the weapons impact, be sure to turn the laser off even if it's in auto laser. So that is the quickest and dirtiest version of this that I could create for you. Uh, I hope it was helpful. This is a really cool process and it's fun to go through. Uh, and again, I want to make it very clear. There's way more detail we can go into. There's probably better ways to do this. There's, there are better explanations out there. I've watched all of the RASBAM official videos. I think they're very good and you can go through that. They're very clear and concise uh, with more detail, but my purpose here was to try to help people that maybe maybe you just want to kind of get into it and have some success dropping a GBU-12 on a target. This should get you there, and then you can go into more detail with some of the other videos out there from people that uh, maybe have a little more experience with this kind of stuff or have been able to play around with it a little bit more than I have or, or whatever. So there is more detail to be had. Uh, hopefully this will get bombs on target for you and help you start to understand the process a little bit better. Uh, I'm Max Powers, Sandman, with 311 Griffin's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Happy flying.